Nellie helped Kelly Rowland out of Beyonce's shadow. In the world of Destiny's Child, Beyonce's dazzling presence often stole the spotlight, leaving the other members to navigate their roles in her formidable shadow. Among them was Kelly Rowland, a beloved figure among fans who had always been considered second to Beyonce's undeniable star power. However, fate intervened when Kelly teamed up with rapper Nelly, providing her with the perfect opportunity to shine individually and finally emerge from the future superstar's shadow. In this video, we'll be exploring Destiny Child's early days, their subsequent solo projects, and how this propelled Kelly into stardom. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for interesting insights into your favorite celebrities. In Beyonce's Shadow There have been questions as to whether Kelly Rowland was really in Beyonce's shadow, but this idea of Kelly being overshadowed by Beyonce is not just hearsay, it's a fact. Kelly Rowland herself openly acknowledged this in an interview. Speaking on a situation, Kelly said, Can you imagine what it's like being in a group with Beyonce? I would just torture myself in my head. Of course, she meant this figuratively. She has also touched on this topic numerous times over the years in her music and various other interviews. Destiny's Child's Solo Projects In 2001, following the launch of Destiny Child's Survivor, Matthew Knowles recognized the need for a break and proposed that each member pursue solo projects. This temporary pause proved to be essential as it allowed them to highlight their individual talents. Moreover, it provided Kelly and Michelle with the opportunity to step into the spotlight and embark on separate artistic journeys. Michelle returned to her gospel roots, showcasing her talent in that genre, while Kelly explored alternative R&B and Beyonce continued with her signature blend of traditional R&B and hip hop. Michelle's gospel album, Heart to Yours, made a significant impact in the gospel world, emerging as the best-selling gospel album of 2002. Her success continued as she released another gospel album in the following years called Do You Know, firmly establishing herself in her chosen path. Michelle was truly making her mark and flourishing in her own right. Nelly calls on Kelly. Next in line was Kelly, who was in the process of working on her solo album when she received an unexpected call from the most popular rapper of that time, offering a collaboration on a track that sampled Patti LaBelle's iconic song, Love, Need, and Want You. The collaboration took place, and when Nelly placed the finished song for Matthew Knowles, the manager of Destiny's Child, he immediately recognized his potential as a hit. In an interview, he expressed, I said immediately, this is a number one song, and Destiny's Child has seven number one songs, so I know one when I hear one. And this indeed was a number one hit song. Global Success Soon after its release, the song skyrocketed to become a global sensation, capturing the top spot on the charts for a consecutive two months. Its overwhelming popularity made it an inescapable presence in 2002. It dominated the airwaves, playing incessantly on every radio station, Likewise, it dominated the visual medium, with its music video being a staple on every video countdown show. Its ubiquitous presence made it impossible to avoid. It seemed to permeate every corner of the music scene. What's truly remarkable about Dilemma is that it was never intended to be released as a single. It was a spontaneous addition to Nelly's album, and yet it swiftly ascended to the pinnacle of the charts solely through airplay. Its phenomenal success was exemplified by its ability to dethrone Nelly's own chart-topping hit, Hot In Here. This feat is no small accomplishment, considering the immense popularity and commercial triumph of Hot In Here. Dilemma effortlessly took its place, solidifying its status as a massive hit. Consequently, Dilemma became a defining song in both of their illustrious careers, standing out as a monumental success. It currently holds the distinction of being their most watched music video on YouTube, having recently surpassed the remarkable milestone of 1 billion views. Perhaps the intrigue surrounding Kelly Rowland's peculiar act of texting Nelly from an Excel sheet played a role in its widespread popularity. However, the tale behind that peculiar incident is a story to be explored on another occasion. Kelly continues to shine. Their undeniable chemistry added an extra layer of greatness to their collaboration. Naturally, this sparked dating rumors between them, although they both vehemently denied any romantic involvement. It's worth noting that Kelly had experienced success with another number one hit single. She had been featured on Avant's chart-topping track, Separated, back in 2000. 
However, the impact of the dilemma was unparalleled, solidifying her position as the first member of Destiny's Child to achieve a solo number one hit. Furthermore, this remarkable achievement earned her a Grammy Award, providing her with the opportunity to truly step out from under Beyonce's shadow. Beyonce's group? As Kelly began to achieve significant success as a solo artist, she started garnering more attention, as many people were previously unfamiliar with her individual identity. Prior to this, she and Michelle were often regarded as backup dancers and backup singers for Beyonce. This was evident during an interview with Wendy Williams, who repeatedly referred to Destiny's Child as Beyonce and the Girls, highlighting the perception that Beyonce overshadowed the other members. But it's clear that the group is Beyonce and the Girls, so why don't you just go solo? No disrespect to other girls, but we see how things are shaping up. You guys are on TV, the camera stays on you. You get the hottest Dior, they get the leftovers. To Wendy's credit, she wasn't the only one who often referred to Destiny's Child as simply Beyonce. Kelly acknowledged this phenomenon in an interview, emphasizing that Beyonce's immense popularity sometimes overshadowed the recognition of the entire group by explaining that, People always say we've never heard you sing with Destiny's Child when I've sung on every single album. Beyonce hates the fact that people always say that it's your group. Now she's like, well, maybe they'll get off my back. It's astonishing to consider that there were individuals who admitted they had never heard Kelly sing before, highlighting how much the spotlight was primarily on Beyonce. The notion of people disregarding anyone who wasn't Beyonce was evident. Moreover, some fans claim that Beyonce received all the attention and favoritism due to her father's influence. However, Kelly countered this by asserting that, as much as I am flattered by what they're saying, I think it worked for us. Beyonce has a talent that stands on its own. It had nothing to do with Matthew. She didn't have to have her daddy tell her, you're gonna do this song. She made it by her talent and that's real. But if people were expressing to Kelly that they hadn't heard her sing, can we truly consider the arrangement successful? It's worth noting that Matthew Knowles refuted this belief when he stated, Kelly has a beautiful voice and in no way is she a background singer. Dilemma showcased her in a way that it should. She's a star in her own right. Debut album. Anyway, with the spotlight now on Kelly, all eyes were eagerly anticipating her debut album and curious to see what she would deliver. However, due to the rapid success of Dilemma, she found herself rushing to release her album in order to capitalize on the triumph of her number one single. Just a few months after the release of Dilemma, Kelly Rowland unveiled her debut album, Simply Deep, a captivating blend of alternative R&B and rock. Kelly herself explained, the great thing is that I've always loved R&B rock and Sade, who I think is a category all of her own. This album reflects my personality, what kind of music I will listen to, what I was going through when I recorded the record, and my childhood. Kelly's follow-up to Dilemma came in the form of a cautionary tale titled Stole, which climbed the charts and contributed to the album's impressive global sales of 2 million copies. Overall, the album was well-received, showcasing the influence of Solange, Beyonce's sister, who had written and produced tracks on the album. However, the momentum generated by Dilemma didn't entirely carry over to the album, one of the factors contributing to this was the rushed nature of the album and the decision to release Stole as the follow-up single. Opting for a rock song as a successor to a massive hip-hop R&B hit might not have been the most strategic move. During the hiatus of Destiny's Child, Kelly experienced a period of great success. With the number one hit single and a Grammy under her belt, she also ventured into a solo career and made a significant acting debut in Freddy vs. Jason. Kelly's star was truly rising, and those who had previously labeled her as a backup singer to Beyonce were proven wrong. Dilemma became a timeless classic, evoking a rush of nostalgia whenever it graces our ears. It is undeniably one of the best songs ever, but these are just our thoughts on the matter. We would love to hear your perspective in the comments below, and be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to keep supporting.